Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Katarina Simila from ICRO. I hope and trust that all of you know something about ICRO, that ICRO exists. So I will not spend time on explaining anything about my organization, but if you want to know, grab me and I can talk till the cows come home. So the, the thing is that I will, okay, I will try to share some of my experience with networking or some of my ideas of networking uh, in Americas. I'm very excited to be in the Americas because uh, my, my working experience began in Bolivia in 1980. And after that, I've been in, in Peru with a regional project for Latin America for six years. I've had the opportunity to be a couple of times in the United States. And I have been told that Canada exists by very <laughs> reputable people, but I have no personal experience so far. So I've tried to be evidence-based and scientific. So one day. And so, so, but I think it is a very interesting con context to think about networks. For me, Apoyo has always been a very good, good example of network, not only because I was also marginally involved in, net, in Apoyo, and often we love the networks that are kind of our networks, <laughs> but also because I saw that it functioned very well. And out of professional interest, it was important for me to try to, to understand what made it work, what made it tick. And a lot of the thing, general comments that I have, I think have to do with lessons that I learned from Apoyo. I think that Apoyo was a, a, a kind of a pre-social media. I mean, before there was social media, there was Apoyo. And that was uh, many of the characteristics of what makes the social media very strong today, and very um, influential, had kind of the same principles as Apoyo had uh, at the time. Okay, my, my, I work with everything. I work in an intergovernmental organization and we, take, we help our member states to work with all kinds of cultural heritage. I work with the you know, collections unit, so if it moves, that's the thing we work with. If it doesn't move, we leave it to the immovable guys. <laughs> but my, my own professional, my, my, my passion are the textiles. And in these times when network is a very fashionable word, you cannot present any kind of uh, uh, project or any kind of thing if it doesn't somehow in, infringe on networking. And I try to understand what people mean by the network. And by, as I'm a textile person, I try to think as a textile, the net is a textile structure, right, Amelia? Yes, thank you, confirmation from the net. So while I, I, I draw you a couple of pictures, I want you to think about the, your own networks in your life, not professional, but your family or your school friends or something. What is, what is a good functioning, exciting network for you in your life, right? And, and why? why what, what makes that network special? So quickly. These are two types of net-like structures, right? One is a, is a structure made of, not very complete, strings that are knotted and they are knots, right? That space is strings. And many networks, are, and they are like fishing nets, right? They are often like that. And there are networks which are, human networks, which are very much like that which are very fixed nodes, they know their position, and they are there and they, they, wor they work. They have specific physical functions. You know, they don't depend on any one net you can cut off. Then there are more kind of, for me, more exciting nets, which are like sprang-like structures, which are like strings which are kind of intertwined but no knots, which are like hammocks in the Amazonian jungle. And there are, there are more kind of flexible, 
networks, which also function. I, 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 I've been trying to find out what are the, you know, trapeze artists, when they fall, they, boom, they fall into something that catches them. And that's in it, but I don't know what's the structure. I'll let you know when, you, when I find out. So I think that we have to understand what we mean by networks. I don't particularly trust people who say, I have created a network. I have set up a network. Because for me, a successful and functioning and healthy network, does, it cannot be depending on one person. It cannot be run by one person, right? A, a, a telephone list or contact list is not a network. It's a list. It can become, it can become an, an active, an activated network. But I think that this control and, 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 and at the beginning, at the start, um, controlling of, 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 of a network is overrated. It's exaggerated as, you know, that's something that achieves something. I think that uh, a network is not for people. It is of people. You know, people make up the, the, the networks. And that means that networks are not always very elegant. In over 30 years of mostly work, of often working in, in Latin America, there's a kind of telenovela dimension that the networks, you know, because they are made up of people, the fights and the things, and, oh, and this horrible and disaster, and then the next year, hugs and tears, and it's very, very, very human dimension. I think these are more important in our profession because oftentimes, Conservation can be very solitary. People are very alone in the institutions, in their countries. In their, so to have this network of colleagues <coughs> is, 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 of, is more important for our profession than for many other people who are not so solitary in, in, their, in their actions. So I think that somehow a, a, a apoyo or any other network is, is a structure that reacts and vibrates together. You know, that makes a healthy network that somehow when some kind of thing happens, you are not alone, you're not crushed by it. You all of a sudden, you, the, the network is, is reacting with you. People is fine and that people know each other. I think that is, and, and that they know of each other's work is at the heart of a network. So the flow of information within a network is of paramount importance. And I also think that the, the, there's a trust element in a healthy net. When I, when I first heard of Apoyo, I used to ask a lot of people who pro, attended a course or something, how did you learn about this? And at a certain time, every single person said, through Apoyo. You know, they found out that something was being organized somewhere, it was through Apoyo. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Also, in our profession, and especially in Latin America, I don't know of the rest of the Americas. One of the things is that the institutional stability, yes, is very questionable. The, 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 the institutions crumble and shift and change. Cultural ministry all of come, uh, sudden becomes a department of culture and then the movable heritage is separated, but then the museums come together and then the other one. So the institutional landscape changes. So an institutional net, net of institutions is not very strong. Whereas I have seen that, that in our profession and in our countries, the, the individuals float. All of a sudden, everything crumbles, but they bop. The, 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 the strong ones, the, the, the most competent ones, the, the, the passionate, the, the, the ones who can't help themselves, they, they kind of emerge in some kind of heritage business again. And so the network relies on links between that it's like the memory is carried, the institutional memory is carried in the individuals. And that means that the, 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 the network becomes kind of a memory bank. I also think that to know each other, I mean, not these kind of situations, is absolutely at the core of, the internet is fine, and Skyping is fine, and YouTubing is fine, but I think that actually being able to sit together and meet is important. And it's becoming more and more difficult to justify organizing such things. Because no, we can do everything online. Hmm, I doubt that and question that. Another thing that I think uh, strengthens uh, the, the, the network is when you have, when ideas move. 
when you have people who share ideas and develop ideas together, it is not interesting for me to share. We, we have an unhelpful uh, practice of sharing results of what we have already done. And so, no, that's fine, because oh, we're happy. Oh, we're so happy that you did that. But had I known it, I could have helped you, or I would have worked with you, or I have a student who's working on the same thing. I think it is interesting if we make these kind of cuckoo noises to each other at the stage when we're starting off with something. We say, I'm thinking, or I'm interested in this, or I've been asked to do this. Is there anybody else who has experience or interest in working on this? Networks are very good in, 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 in making that kind of thing stronger, more exciting, and vibrant, more relevant. In, in spreading out the, the, the impact of anything that we do. Another thing which I find very interesting is the question of money. Because people often say that, that they, if only, like my network needs money. And if we have money, or if I have money, then I can make this network. I think also that is very simplistic and potentially dangerous, because money does not actually do anything. If you have money, you, it's just money. <laughs> you haven't done anything. You have the money. And it does also, it doesn't ensure anything. And oftentimes, the, 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 to make a, uh, it's more important to, to have build up on the ideas and then get money. To get money and then start to try to invent some ideas. Because one of the things that if you have too much money, kind of random money, or oh, we have this thing and now we have to network, people feel not needed. You know, networks become functional when people feel that they have a role, that they, their contribution is significant, and that their participation makes something out of it. If it's just something that I am making and building this up for you, and then your only thing is to be like, Okay, I'm here. I, I applaud that I have now been networked. You know, that is very long, uh, not sustainable on the long term. I'm not saying that we people don't need money, but I think that too uh, too often people get discouraged too early. Ah, I have no money, so I won't think about this thing anymore. No, think about it. Let's think about it. Let's let's communicate and work towards. Uh, to, towards new opportunities and working together. Before Beatrice says anything, I just wanted to say something about some things that I think is important for the future from today. One of the issues is that this uh, money and resources that we can mobilize, and also especially for organizing anything international, like getting people together, and especially having the, all the Americas together, there are very limited typologies of movement. Usually what can be done is that one moves one person. You move a mega expert who is taken to a place where there are people, many people who know very little. And this expert can be paid to go there and talk to the people who know very little. That is very valuable. But if I think of the future, of how, how people and societies learn, it is becoming much more on sharing and discussing between people and colleagues and peers. That is how new knowledge is being built increasingly. And it is very, very difficult to fund and to justify, because many of the funding agencies need this kind of argumentation. And I think it would be exciting to see how we can, for example, organize a training activity for all the Americas in Patagonia. Because there are colleagues who want to learn the same thing all over the place. And, and to kind of go from this uh, uh, somehow limited, a one single track, which is very valuable, but we should be able to justify more kind of movement of professionals. And so we have to educate the funders. Mm -hmm. I think also that I, I want to see more of in, uh, hijacking conferences, right? If I hear somebody saying, well, I am now setting up the first conference on this and that, I don't believe them. There is no conference, the first international conference of archives. There have been international conferences of archives before. It's not the first conference. And I doubt that if you have very, 
any meeting is good, but I think we should also go and spread and, for example, make national conferences international, as we are in the process of doing now. This American Institute of Conservation. But it is an international opening in it. We should go and hijack in Chile in July, there will be a national conference. They are setting up a kind of parallel session which is called Visions of Latin America or something like that, so that colleagues from other countries can justify going there. I think we should do more and more of that. And if we are paper conservatives, we should hijack some engineering conference. You know, if they are already setting up, we just book a room there and find out how engineers think. Yes, interesting idea. Also, I think that we have to focus a lot on, on trying to make this kind of network and international dimension a part of the professional identity of students. That already when people are studying, they, they, they are told or, and shown that to become a professional, you have to have also an international solidarity dimension. And not that being an international is the cherry on the cake once you have worked in this field for many, many years, and you get to go somewhere. No, we have to, to push and encourage, and not that they talk through us, but they are in direct contact, and we don't even know what the students are talking. And they can complain about their idiot professor among other, oh, my professor is also an idiot. You know, that kind of discussions that, that make part of the professional fiber and, and, and identity, I think we have to work all work towards that. There is so much exciting diversity. The, the nature of heritage in our countries is changing. New kinds of things have become all of a sudden important. For me. There is fascinating diversity of heritage. There's a fascinating diversity of actors, of professionals, of all kinds of things. So I think that the, the, to trust and, and share ownership of our networks gives us a good basis for going ahead and, and having a very exciting new future. And I'm sure that the Apoyo Online will be a good platform for doing that, and I, and I applaud it for existing. It is there for us to, to use. I hope that these ideas at least wake people up more than my coffee apparently did <laughs> to me this morning. So thank you very much, everybody.